Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're going to be compiling a custom kernel on FreeBSD. I do hope you enjoy it, and let's get into it. Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we are compiling a custom kernel on FreeBSD. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the source uh, tar file. So. Uh, you can download that from their website, but the easiest way is just install it while you're installing FreeBSD. So, uh, you know, make sure you've done that, but if you haven't, you can get it off the website. You can use a um, CVS, I believe. There's lots of other ways to get it. FTP even. But anyway, once you've gotten that and you've unpacked it to slash user slash source slash user rather, um, you want to check and make sure you're root. If we do ID right now, we are not root. So we, what we want to do is the su command or sudo su. It doesn't really matter which one. What matters is that we are root. So the uid of 0 and gid of 0. And what you want to do is go to the directory, user, source, sys. And once you're in here, we want to use the command you name dash a and what you want to look for at the end of this command is the string if it is amd64 you have an x86 64 bit processor if it's i3d6 you have the 32 bit variant of that and uh, also if it's arm you have an arm processor so depending on what you have affects what directory here you want to go into. And we have AMD64, so we're going to go into AMD64. Once we're in here, we want to go to conf. And I'll clear the screen here. <coughs> so sorry about that. And um, what you want to focus on is the generic file. What we want to do to make a custom kernel, and this is one way to do it, we want to copy that file to one um, named something else. We'll name it T-Tech. You can name it after your system, whatever it's doing, etc. But uh, <clears throat> what we want to do now is go into that file. And you don't have to use Vi. You can use Nano, etc. And what this file is, is it is essentially the the options in this file turn code on or off when you build the kernel so it either includes code or excludes it now lots of these options we do not have to modify but you can modify this ident field we're going to call it ttech this is the field you see in the uname command and we'll see all this once we're done um, like most of these, like these two, these are for the compiler itself. You don't need to edit these. There's no reason to. Um, interestingly, you can edit. The, this is the TCP IP stack. This is IPv4 and IPv6, the init, init and init 6 lines. So if you want to take a certain version of IP out of your TCP IP stack, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it, of course, but you can. You can take IPsec support in and out. So you can do lots of different things. You can even change how the TCP, the TCP implementation works. At least what features it has. There's many things here. Even like soft updates in the UFS file system. You can turn those off if you wish. Many other things to do with that. But there's about three main reasons at least that I can personally think of for doing this one would be um, adding new hardware in if you're a developer and you have a new driver or a new subsystem in the kernel you want to make you would make different options and, and put them in the file here uh, second is uh, resource utilization maybe you don't have a lot of RAM because what we're doing is actually taking out devices that are actually built into the kernel, so they're not loaded in RAM all the time. And that saves RAM for us. 
But uh, the last one is uh, security as well, because maybe you don't trust loading code into your kernel, and uh, you want to just have specifically um, the the code for like a network driver right from FreeBSD, and you don't want to load an external module that may have been tampered with, etc. There's lots of reasons to do this. But what we're going to do is I'm going to just base it off my laptop for the most part. Uh, what we're going to do, I don't have a floppy disk drive, so I didn't explain yet um, how you remove the options. You can either comment them like this with a comment at the end. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use dd and vi here and delete the line. All right. You can go down here. It does depend. Use dmessage to find the devices you have. But like here, we don't have RAID in this laptop, so we can take the RAID controllers out. So we're going to go right up here, and we're just going to delete these RAID controllers because we don't need them. This doesn't mean that we can't load a lot of this as modules, because you can. But uh, it's up to you. Same thing with NVMe. I don't have NVMe, so we don't need the code in the kernel um, to access an NVMe device. So let's just remove that. You do want to keep your keyboard and mouse in most all cases, and your VGA and all of that. This laptop does have card bus in it, but I honestly don't use it, so we're going to remove these. I don't use the COM port in this. And also, though, that is uh, all the COM ports, so if you use any form of serial, you're going to want to keep that selected. Don't really use the parallel ports. You can take those out. And UARTs as well can come up. Now, the cool thing is, if we save this real quick... Um, what I want to do to show you is I'm going to take out the EM0 driver and that'll actually disable my Ethernet. So we're going to go down to that option again. Uh, oh, there it is. And what we're actually going to do is just take uh, that option out as well as the others because I do not have them. And uh, these are 100 megabit NICs that I do not uh, have, so we're going to... Um, one thing, if you want some of these NICs, you have to keep this code. All right, I deleted the comment already, but you have to keep MII bus to have the kernel use these drivers. Again, if you don't have them, you don't need them. So we can just delete this whole string of stuff. Not stuff, it's the Ethernet drivers, but... Um, wireless. I do not use WEP. The WEP, I'm going to remove it. Same thing with TKIP in my case. And I know I don't have an Atheros card. So we can remove a lot of these. I do have an IWN wireless card, so we'll keep that one in the kernel. But the rest of them are okay to go. The pseudo devices <clears throat> are for things like here we have for VLAN support. So if you want to have VLANs here, you can uh, take that uh, in or out. Um, what you want to remember, if you take these out, you can still load them as modules. And we'll talk about that in a second. And if you want to take USB support out, I don't have MMC. This is if you want it to be virtualized in Hyper-V and Zen. Of course, I don't have that here. And as far as we have here, we don't need any of the virtual support. If you knew exactly what sound card you have, you can um, take the others out as well. Now, do remember, especially up here, um, it's like a structure of a building with the entire operating system and user land. If you take something out, something else needs, you're going to get a compile time error. And sometimes quite a ways through the build process. So you can't take code out, other code depends on, because when it compiles, it will have undefined functions and not be able to compile. 
Okay. So, but the changes I have made are are safe. I know they work. Don't copy them completely because they won't necessarily work for your system. And you might be, um, you know, you need to do your, your research for this so you know you have what you need. Now that we've done that, though, we're going to save that. And you want to go back. You can use cd dot dot twice. You want to go back to sys. Okay. I'm sorry, not sys. Uh, user source. All right. And uh, you see here. It has a make file in it for all these targets. Some of these targets are what we need. So basically ways it, it knows how to compile things. What we're going to do is make build kernel. And then we want to... Oh, I forgot to show you something very important. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, I'm going to go back there. What you can do after you've done your changes, um, look at generic with diff and look at your changed file. And then you can see everything you took out. So if you're trying to troubleshoot an issue, you can go through line by line and see if there's any differences. What differences you have and things like that. So um, this is how you compile it though. Make build kernel, kern conf equals, and then specify your configuration file. And uh, once we're done there, we're going to hit enter and the video might mess up because I'm recording it on the same system. But uh, after that starts, and you'll see it start up, I'm going to pause uh, the video and I will be back when this finishes and then we'll install our custom kernel. Alright, the build just completed of our kernel and it did take quite a bit. But now, the next step is, now that we've built the new kernel, we have to install that kernel so we can boot it. So to do that, we're going to do make install kernel kern conf equals, and then you want to have that same config file we used to build the kernel. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter on this. And now it proceeds to install. <clears throat> One thing that I do want to mention. The first time you make a custom kernel, you have the ability the ability to click... I, I don't remember the exact button, the, the exact number in the bootloader. But it will switch back to the old kernel. And if it's your first build, the old kernel will be the generic kernel. So if it doesn't boot because you left out, say, uh, you know, your serial interface for your SATA hard drive, or your SATA hard drive, something like that, it uh, won't uh, boot up. So then you can go back and fall back to that. But if you've done it multiple times, it will replace the uh, stock generic. But you can just build it again. And if you did, if, if you reboot right now and it doesn't come back up, boot the old kernel. But And then once you get back into that kernel, fix what was wrong, and then you can rebuild it. But what I'm trying to explain is, if you had a mistake where it's not booting, all you'd really have to, and, and you've replaced the generic kernel, all you'd have to really do is make build kernel kern conf equals generic and that will build the generic kernel again and then following that we do the same thing to uh, install the generic then you should have your all your hardware support back that's only if you made a mistake though so with all that we'll do one more uname dash a and when we reboot, if it boots up and detects everything, um, we'll have T-Tech at the end there. And maybe a little less memory usage. But with that, I will see you in a second. Alright, we're booted back up. And if we do a uname dash A, T-Tech is our kernel that is built. So we did uh, configure everything correctly. And there is one thing, though, and it's relating to kernel modules. If we do sudo 
TLD stat. You'll see there are some modules loaded for uh, USB audio and things of that nature. The thing is, if you, like, going to the security side of this, if you don't want modules loaded in the kernel that you may not trust, the the only way to stop that is setting secure level to 3 for the kernel. That's the only way to really stop that. And if, if you don't want modules at all, you'd have to build these devices directly into the kernel. And, and then you, you go the other way, where you would be increasing RAM requ requirements. But uh, that's the, the main thing. Like right now, how I said we took EM0 out of there. If I do an fconfig, there is no LO0. And if I uh, grep for EM, there is no... Well, it, it does detect it, but it doesn't load the code for it. And actually, that may have been an old one. But the the device is not there. What I'm getting at is, if I plug an Ethernet cable in, it will load the module, if underscore EM. So, the main thing you can do, build the devices, and you could potentially delete the kernel modules, but you don't need to do that. And anyway... Um, that's how we build a custom kernel. I hope it made sense, and I hope it helped you if you want to do it, too. So, with all that, I'm Tyler with T-Tech. Thank you for watching, and have a very nice day.